I've been on the council now 10 years and infrastructure has always been a big priority. You know, Centerville for a very long time. So in 2006, actually, when I moved here, the state had just come through and repaved 213, so Liberty and Commerce Street. The, the infrastructure underneath is so old. Some of the pipes are 80 years old, right? When they came in and they actually did the repaving, when they put their vibrating contract compactor on there, some of our water connections that were underneath immediately started to leak. So here you have a, a week old, you know, one week old newly repaved road and we have to go in there and repair, right? Yeah. So, you know, that kind of stuff is, is not sustainable. So in uh, 2010 or 2011, I think the state came back to the town and said, we're gonna plan on repaving again in 2018 or 2019 and we're not gonna do it if you don't have this infrastructure fixed because we're not going to allow that stuff again. So we, we started you know, with the plan and, and we figured out that we wanted to have the infrastructure repaired. So you know, it, it's, a, it's a, a big deal. It's as big of a project as I think as the town has had in probably 40 or 50 years. Uh, so it needed to get done. You know, the infrastructure was clearly in a, in a really bad way. Uh, the, it was never going to get any cheaper. It was never going to get any better. And it had so when, when does it actually get completed? So we're at the point now where we're almost done. Uh, we have one small tie-in that needs to happen with our sewer system at the northern portion. Uh, the problem is, is that with the state replacement of the road, of, of their bridge, they have some barriers up that are that are impeding our ability to get underneath the road. So we believe right now that, that what we've what we've got is we're going to be able to get it back to one-way traffic on Liberty and Commerce and, and Water Street by the end of September. The original goal was the end of August before school started so that the buses could flow freely. But now we're looking at about a month more. So terminal date hopefully is the end of September of 2019. Right. Um, I think that when we have the roads are fixed, uh, the road fixing and the infrastructure fixing is, is not going to be a panacea, uh, you know, solve everything. But it's all of the other things that we're investing in right now as well. So, for example, if you look at the downtown, we've been able to get grants over the past several years, over $130,000 worth of grants, what are called facade improvement grants. So these are this is money from the state that we can give to any downtown business who want to improve their facade. If they want to put a new sign up, if they want to put a, an awning in, if they want to paint their, you know, they apply to us and we give it to them. I mean, I think that we've got some things here that are getting to the point where, where we're really on the cusp, right? We've got a war, for example, that over the past 10 years has transformed itself. Uh, we've got this downtown, I think, is also one of those. You know, you talk about commuters driving through from, from the, you know, Ken Island up to, up to Chestertown. You come through at 5 o'clock at night on a Friday, and it's totally dead, right? Hopefully, when we've got this new streetscape that we've just put out there, we've got an expanded sidewalk. We've salvaged our old, um, some old tra uh, lights that, we, that we've put up. We've got some trees that are going in. We're, we're just on the uh, process now of passing an ordinance to allow for outdoor dining. So the hope is that when people start driving through, they will see a more vibrant downtown. People may be eating outside, you know, people will be gathering out there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the growth that the county has gone through over the past 10 years is because of Centerville. So in the time period from 2001 to 2010, Centerville was the third fastest growing town, incorporated town in the, in the state. Right, so we, we put in uh, two very large subdivisions that were about 400 units each over the past 10 years, or starting in 2001. So, you know, since 2010, with the way the economy was, things have slowed down, but Centerville has definitely grown. I mean, we went, in, I think in 2001, we had about 2,100 uh, residents, and we're now we're almost approaching 5,000. So it's a lot of growth. The YMCA, I think, is one of those things that it was a controversial political hot topic, uh, like many things are here in the Eastern Shore, and many projects that we that we implement. Once it's done, it's going to be like the greatest thing ever, right? I'm so help, uh, hopeful about the YMCA. I think they're in a fantastic location. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a thing that that once it's here, uh, the the physical building is here and it's built. It, it's going to be a, the greatest thing ever. You know, they were very good in that. As soon as they got the you know the go okay to go, they rented a facility. They've got a facility already here in Centerville. They're already making some inroads, and I believe now they're going through fundraising and eventually they're going to they're going to build the building. But it's going to be a great thing for Centerville. Yeah. 
uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a challenge, right? I, I would say that it was more of an opportunity. And, and I think that the tide is turning on, on medical marijuana, on, on recreational marijuana as well. And I think that, that Centerville, it's one of those things we, we wanted to say, hey, we're business friendly, we're open for business. You know, when, when they approached uh, the dispensary, when they approached the county, the county said no. The state came in and said you can't outzone them, so they made a, a zoning area that was just not going to work for them. There was a lawsuit, and the town said, you know, town's got different zoning than the county does, and the town said, okay, you can come here. I look at it like if, if Merck decided to come in and they wanted to build a, a facility that was going to, you know, make pills or something that's going to save your diabetes, we would welcome them. And so we've actually been very successful in that. We've got uh, a dispensary here in town. We've got a grow facility in town. We've also got a, a processing uh, facility. And... We have a lot of great family events, right? I mean, being a bedroom community, there's a lot of families that live here in town. And so we, we really have tried to focus in on what kind of tourism can we get that's going to bring in families and what kind of uh, events can we have that are going to attract the families that we have here already, right? So I, I had mentioned earlier the wharf, right? The wharf has had a tremendous transformation in the past 10 years. It was basically an industrial wasteland. There was a lot of controversy down there about building in a sensitive area. The town ended up buying that property before I got on the council, but we've been able to get hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant funding to, to fix it, right? We, we took out all the old concrete. We actually were able to raise the surface to prevent flooding uh, by several feet. We've got a, a beautiful boardwalk that we've put down there. We've got 10 boat slips. This weekend, we're actually having, I think, our seventh or our eighth uh, family fun event down there. It's a, a kids fishing derby. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Corsica River Conservancy who provides the fishing, you know, the poles and the bait. And it's an opportunity for young kids who have never even been to the river or never fished to have an opportunity to fish, right? We've got, we give out trophies to the biggest fish. It's really a great thing. So if we can teach one kid, hey, here's the river, here's how you appreciate it, hopefully it'll get better in the future. In, in conjunction with that, we've actually also got this is also happening this Saturday, uh, a, um, a new playground. So a grant funded Parks and Recs uh, playground, $200,000 playground that we're gonna dedicate Saturday evening. And then later that night, we've got an outdoor movie. So we're showing the Lego movie too. And it's, it's one of those great things, right? And uh, it's great for families to come. And, and in fact, the creamery here is they're gonna bring, they've got a new ice cream truck. So they're gonna bring the ice cream truck down there as well. So.